The clinical model are kind of is built up over time for different purposes. The purpose of the logical modeler is to create a model of types. You know, what are the bits and pieces, what, what are the actual types of resource that you want to you want to, to represent. The scenario builder was developed to do instances, to be able to link real resources together in a graph to kind of feel how things actually work together. And we've wound up using the logical modeler for two different purposes, and I suspect that's what's causing the confusion. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll show you what I called in the um, introduction a resource model, but we'll go back to just calling it a logical model. I'm going to rely on my beautiful assistant here to tell me, well you started it, um, to, to tell me if I'm going wrong. And so what I'll do is I'll just kind of give you a demonstration of how you could use the logical modeler to build a model that represents real fire resources. So we're in the real fire resources line here. And I'm going to use, I'll continue to use the discharge summary as being the example that we use. And I'll show you how you can reference and link the elements of the scenario, uh, I'm sorry, the elements of the resource back into the model. And hopefully that will make that a bit clear. And then I'll show you how you can then create a, uh, a, 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 a scenario, if you like, sort of based on that model but not, but they're two completely different tools, they're intended for two different purposes. So it's not a question that you take one and build it from the other, they're related in the sense that the, my thinking was that the fire guy would create the resources model for you and then you would then be able to say, aha, I realise I need a list resource and I realise I need a yeah. condition resource and then you'd use the um, scenario builder to build one and see what it looks like. That was the yeah. thinking behind it. So, so just remember, we didn't come here today with a tool that said, this is going to do everything for you. These tools are used to help understand and explain about fire. Clearly, it feels like the audience would like some tooling so they get on and do some real fire work, but that just doesn't exist. And this is the best thing that we've got. So this is a, an A to help us explain about fire and getting you to do some work. Okay, but if there's a requirement to develop the tooling to get it to a state that that does other things, that's a different, that's a good outcome from the workshop. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to build a, a discharge summary, right? So we're going to go into a logical modeler, and feel free, by the way, do do your own stuff there. You're going to create a new model, and it's going to be my discharge summary. Okay. Oops, D I S C H A R, my discharge summary. I'm going to check to make sure that it hasn't already been used before, and I'm good to go. Now, one thing I didn't go over, and perhaps I ought to have, is this thing of the model type. Now, I'm going to select a single model. Now, I'll tell you why I'm going to do that in just a minute. When you create a um, a model based on a single model, you're effectively telling the modeler, you know, please start with this one and, and work from there. You can override that, and we'll see how we do this as we go on. But I'm going to say that I'm going to select a composition, uh, like so, and I'm going to uncheck the copy of the elements into the model. Again, the logical model was intended to serve a whole raft of different purposes, so often the way you sort of start out with it's important. So. I'm going to do that. I'm going to save it, and I'm going to correct, start with a with a with a uh, a blank model. So David, do you want to explain why you chose composition? I chose composition because this is going to be a document, and as we'll see coming forwards, right. um, that's going to be important. I don't so, want to say any more than well, that. Just, just so, some just people. So so it's important. Comp, as a fire person, you, doing this, you'll have a bit more understanding because you're clinically trained in fire, that composition is the resource that helps with documents. Correct. So that's why you've chosen that. And again, the, 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 if you're going to do this kind of model, then you do need to understand the fire resources. It's a prerequisite. The, the, the thinking behind the information model was that you didn't have that prerequisite. You can do whatever you wanted to. But we've moved on from that now. We're now the fire guy. We now understand fire, and we're now effectively translating from the previous one into this model. So it's a document. And I'm going to start with a patient. So the first... There's thing. a question. Yep. Could you put a person and change the one you've already started? Change the one you've already started? Yeah, if you've got, got that, can we change the one you've already started? 
you Not can't, yet. but you sort of don't have to. Uh, and follow me through, and you'll yep. see. We'll see what I mean. Um, and unfortunately, there is. I mean, it's early stage tooling. You can get to a point, and you just got to blow it away and start again. And I'm, I'm sorry about that. Um, you know, you can, you can get a little, little icon of me and put pins in this, and I'll understand. So this is going to be a patient. Now, a, I know there's a patient resource. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that the data type is a reference, and it's a reference yeah. to Aha, John. a patient. Aha. And I'm going to, and I'm. I'm going to say the patient, like so. Sometimes I want to do more than that, and then I'm going to save it. So I now have a patient, and if I click over here, you'll see it's now a reference to patient. I now want to be quite explicit about what are the what are the elements from the patient resource that I want to include. So I select my patient node, which is already there and I click on the Add Element. So I'm adding an element to my patient node. Now there's a couple of ways that I could do this, but the way that I'm going to do it is based on my knowledge that I've already established a relationship between this node in my tree and the fact that it's a patient. So if I wanted to add the date of birth, I can go down to this mapping path. And the mapping path is where I connect from the model to, to the fire. fire. That's a connection bit. And because the tooling already knows it's a patient, because that's the one I've come from, I can type in something like birth date, and it will automatically go into the list of possible uh, elements from patient, and give me that list, and if I select that one by pressing enter, then it gives it a name of birth date, which I could change if I wanted to. It sets the data type to date, because that's what was in the specification for patient, and it establishes that mapping there. And if I save that now, so I now have birth date, and birth, da birth date, I'm, yeah, I have a thing called birth date in my model, which is linked to birth date in the fire resource. And you can see that in the mappings there. And you can see that in the mapping right. over there. Yeah. Again, if particularly if you're going away and playing like we're kind of modifying the structure for today, which is cool, we're going to be responsive. Um, we'll create a set of exercises and we'll document them yeah. a bit better and, and, and send them around to do them in your own time. And please, 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 if you come across stuff that you think it should do and doesn't, then let me know. And I'll show you where to do that in, in a little while. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is this is a discharge summary. So the discharge summary is going to be about an encounter of some sort. So therefore, I want to add information about, about the encounter the patient has had. So again, notice I've gone back to the top node there. So I now add an element for that. And I'm going to call it, I'm going to give it a different name. Hospital visit, just to show that I can. And I'm going to create, again, this is going to be a reference and it's going to be a reference to an encounter. And then I'll save that. It, the, the, the description, by the way, is required in Fire. What, what's happening behind the scenes is as I create my model, behind the hood it's being saved, so it's being saved as technically what's called a structure definition resource, which is the, the underlying core um, Fire modeling thingy. So there, uh, you know what I mean. I, I don't know what I mean. Um, it's, the, okay. it's the artifacts of which you yep. save things technically in fire. Yeah, and you can see it if you really want to, but you almost certainly don't. So now I have hospital visit, which as you can see is an encounter, and I can do the same sort of thing. I can add an element like so, um, and again I'm going to put in a... I can drop it down from here or I can select it. Now, what, if you happen to have forgotten what it is that... I'm um, sorry, what resource you, you, you are... If you happen to have forgotten the details of the resource you're interested, what you might want to do is open up another tab, and in that other tab, open up the fire, fire version. And this is exactly what we did in our workshop. And this is actually where having a, a multi-screen in practice works really well, because you have the one on the other side. So I'm going to go to Encounter, like so, and I'm going to have a look at that. And what I really want to do is I, wa I want to put when the patient was you know, in hospital, the admission date and the discharge date. 
And if I go down through here, I will see that there is there, period. There's the start and end date of the encounter. So in my model, I want to be able to indicate what the, uh, what the period was. Now, there's a couple of things I could do. I could go into here, and I could just type in period, like so, and no, notice how there's a number of different periods. That's the one I want, encounter period. Because we're stepping into certain data types. Remember, you've got to be a fire guy to do this kind of stuff, so it's allowed to be a little bit complicated. Um, but I'm going to indicate that it was the um, encounter period. So again, I've now added the encounter period. By the way, I haven't saved this yet, so if my computer crashes, the whole model crashes, but I can live with that. And notice as we build it up again, we're now getting our kind of mind mappy or our, our, our references between models are starting to become a little bit more explicit. I'm going to go back to my designer here and I'm going to realise that actually I didn't want to just have period in my model because that's boring. I actually wanted to have start date and end date. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete that element there and it's now gone. And instead I'm going to go back into hospital visit and add an element. This time around I'm going to say admission date. Now when I link it, I'm still got, it's still got to link to a period. So if I go back to my model here, and I look at period there, the start and end time of the encounter. And notice how the period uh, is actually a data type period, which is this column here. I was going to go into this in a bit more detail later on, but that's fine. Let's do it now. So in this particular representation of fire, this column here is the, is the data type. If I'm not sure what a period actually is, I can click on it and it will take me to the definition of period. And there we see it's got a start and an end. So that's fine. I'm going to go back here now. I'm going to go into my logical modeler and I'm going to say that what I actually want is the period dot... Okay, it's not bringing it, it's not automatically completing it, but it's the period dot start is the one that I want to bring in and it's going to be a date. Like so, And so now we have an admission date, it's linked to period.start, it is of data type date. So as you can see, in, in, in most cases it will automatically pre-populate for you, sometimes it won't. I haven't gotten to all the bits can and pieces I just, yet. Can I just ask, would that technically have been encounter.period.date? Yes. But it doesn't yet find the sub... sub uh, the, su the substring. Yeah. I, should I should probably... Let's yeah. So... So when we did this in the workshop, when we were curating, got the clinical informaticians, the terminologists in the room and the modelers, there are different ways. So as you've said, some people are trying to now, they've created their model and they want to go in and link it to the fire elements. But there'll be clinicians in the room who don't want to do that. Right? So remember, there are different people who, who want to do different levels of you know, fire. If you just want to do the information model, you would just do it in your own way that doesn't link necessarily to fire. But if you know more about fire, you're going to start to think about constructing your model in the way fire uses resources, and this allows you to do that. But you do need, because you're not going to hold in your head all the different elements that are in encounter and all the different elements that are in patient. So you will need another page open because you know a bit more about it, but then as you're trying to link it, you have to think, well, what bit does it link to? So, so that's how you can use this tooling to start to develop your models and make them more like fire, should you want to go down that. But that could also be the job of the fire guy, who knows this more. Okay, so the, well, the point of today is to explain the scope of what's possible, and you don't have to go down this length, but you might work with someone who knows yeah. this more. Yeah, so there was a question, the question at the back there about handing over to the technical people, the... Tony, your Tony, question about Tony, hand, yeah. handing over so, technical people. Sorry, this is, this is an aspect of that because this is, um, if what you wanted to do when you handed over to your technical people was to be quite explicit about the elements in the resource that you, you wanted to include, this is one of the artifacts that you could use to do so. And it may well be that you come across something um, that is not um, in the spec. So for example, let's go to patient and let's say I want to include religion. It's come up before. So I want to add an element like so. Now, and it's going to be religion. 
Okay, and there is not a religion data type. There's a, a, I'm sorry, a religion property. So what we have to do is to create an extension. Now, actually, what we have to do is to have created the extension first, because if you remember, you've got to create something first before you use it. But I'll show you the way in which, if you had created it, so if I go into here, and I say, I'm, oops, I'm adding an extension. And it's going to be an extension to mean religion. And I select that, and I, I tab out of the box. And this other box here opens up saying, what's the URL of the extension definition? And you may recall, when I showed you that example this morning of what a um, resource looked like, the extension definition has a URL, I'm sorry, the extension has a URL reference to its definition. That's what this is. So if we happen to have on the conformance server, and remember I said ClinFire has got those three server types, if it's got that, then I can actually find it from here. So what's now happening is that I've said that I want to create an extension, I've said I want to find an extension, so I need to find the extension definition. When I create an extension definition, I indicate what resources my definition can be used for. So the tool has gone out and said, you know, Mr. Conformance Resource, uh, Mr. sorry, Mr. Conformance Server or Ms. Conformance Server, what extension definitions do you have that I can use in a patient? And that's where these ones have come up. If I'm really, really lucky, which I suspect I won't be. Uh, oh, look at that! Look at that! The that was that was a complete accident. The Care Connect did this. So this is a this is the I've loaded the Care Connect resources onto this conformance resource. So it means I can find it, which means that I can select it there. And so there's the description of it there. I'm happy with that, and I select that. And so now. I have now bound, there's the URL, I've now bound this extension to my model. And if I save that, like so, um, I now have religion. Religion is bound to a fire element called patient extension, and the URL to it is that one there. In fact, that's another way I can look it up from so, there. So Dave, can I, can, Dave, can I come in? So this, this gets a, can get quite complicated. And another way of doing this, so in the, in the workshop, so David said that you you would create this extension beforehand. You don't have to have created it because you might be sitting in the workshop going, we need religion, right? <laughs> we need a religion. Speak right? for yourself. Yeah. <laughs> so I would go back into the religion uh, element. If you go edit, edit element for me. So let's say that it came out in the information modeling that there was an element that you wanted, but Fire hadn't yet created the extension, the tech, not the, you know, the structure definition that we're talking about hasn't been created. I would have just gone patient dot extension dot religion. I, I'm telling myself, I'm using that nomenclature to say I've got an extension, and if the URL was empty, so, can, we, 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 sorry, go on. Okay, um, but that's how I that's how I use so, the tooling. Okay, because we hadn't created that extension. So, David, what would happen if you of doing some modeling. And you don't know what the thing is? Okay. Well, not, not only that you don't know what it is, you just that hasn't you been made it. it. Okay, so that's a good way. A better way. Yeah, that's what um, we did. A, be a better way is, and it's very, very, very close, it's very, very close. So let's say it's race, something equally, um, equally um, difficult. And we don't have race, we know we haven't got race, we're, we're not going to do it. What I would do, I'd do exactly what you've done, is I would go in here and I'd say it was an extension. But I would I just do no more than that because I kind of want to keep my mapping paths correct, whereas putting the dot on the end made it not correct. And all I would do is I'd simply case um, the patient race uh, TBD. But it's a valid point because if particularly if you're in that kind of modelling scenario, the last thing you want to do is to is to drop this, go out, create the extension definition, save it, come back into here, pull it and link it up because your yeah. audience has gone to sleep at that point. But, but you also don't know that you need it if you're in a workshop setting. Yeah. So, so it's ent absolutely, so it's entirely fair enough. So that's how I would do it. Yeah. I'd probably put the data type in there yeah. um, because just to say, uh, and but, just to remind myself, the key to being able to know what the options were in the children was to set the parent to, as a reference to the particular resource that you are interested in. And that flows downwards. So let's think about the, um, the problem list. Yeah. Now we had a, a big discussion about lists 
earlier on before, I can't remember exactly who it was, was with. Um, that's just my surgical colleague, that's correct. So what we mean by list here is an individual patient's list of conditions. I'm not talking about a list of patients, that's a different thing. So the list of conditions for a patient. And bear in mind that a patient can have lots and lots of conditions, but in their, in their problem list, there's only, I only want to put the significant ones in there. And for any one given patient, there may be different lists, because an orthopedic surgeon is only interested in things like, you know, whether they bleed, for example, or, you know, they have haemophilia or have something like that. Whereas a renal physician is interested in other, con in whether they have diabetes or asthma, all that kind of stuff. So when, when you're creating a document like this, you, you're, going to, you're going to create the list and then you're going to hang the conditions off the list. Does that make sense? Um, to do that... that That's the way fire works. That's the way fire right? for, so for lists. <laughs> So when you've got a list of allergies or a list yep. of conditions, you need it's best to use the list resource yep. because yep. you're listing things. Yep. If you want to track a list over time. Yep. So um, I, 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 the re there's a reason why I wanted to show you this, and I'll just... So I'm going to create a, oops, a problem list like so. And I'm going to say that it is a reference... Ah, not a ratio, it is a reference to list like so and then I'm going to save that and now I want to say that this is a, this is a problem list right so it's going to have problems associated with it because the list resource by default will do absolutely anything I want problems so I want to add an element to this and that element is going to be a um, it's going to be I'll call it a problem because that makes more sense to click the problem folks. list and then within that is yep. a problem and I'm going to say that this is actually a reference to condition. I'm going to save that. So I now have a problem list, which is a list, and I have a problem, which is a condition. So when I add children to this, so let's say in my problem, I want to add an element, and I want to give it the code. Notice how it pulls the list of possibilities from the condition resource. Could you have referenced it? Because I have referenced it before. So it's going to be um, uh, condition.code. And if like you so. can't remember, you'd load up the fire spec and look down. You'd flick across and yep. you'd go and have a look. Yep. Because exactly I don't expect so. you to know all this. Okay. Yet. I do. Um, right. Um, but if I was to go to my problem list and add a child to that, add, and add an element to that, it's off the list resource. So it flows down. The references flow down according to how you've described it. So that's where I might want to put the, um, the mode, for example. So, so, David, could I ask you if... This is like tag teaming here. So yeah. if I was a uh, discharge summary person of a hospital and I wasn't thinking in terms of problems, but I was thinking in terms of diagnoses, yep. because that's the sort of thinking from hospitals, um, and I was creating this model, yeah. As a would there be any problem if I, instead of made it, making it the problem list, I labelled it the diagnostic list? None at all. So would I use the same resources? It's just the label I'm giving it is my world image of the, of the, what a discharge summary might be. Yeah. But I'd still use the same resources, wouldn't I? Because they're just labels. They're labels. And right. again, so now that we've done that, we can now do a mind map. And we so now see uh, we have the problem list, which is a list, and the condition yeah. echoing down. So these are just labels that we're artificially putting to describe our model, but under the hood, we're not able to link that problem list, that problem um, condition, we're not able to link that to something called problem. It has to be linked to the condition resource, because there isn't a problem resource. It's called AKA problem, but remember, we have to link it to the right resource. And that's why we're trying to use terms here that make sense, that shows the linkages to the right resources. Okay? So uh, a hospital doctor who may come up with an e-discharge map, mo a model, may use slightly different terms than a GP who might come up with that, but under the hood, if the same the concepts are similar, they're going to ultimately have to link out to the right fire ref resources 
Does that make sense? I'm just trying to help people understand a little bit of the labels and the terminologies and... Okay? Yep. Questions? Yep. Um, so Thanks, David. Uh, so I followed along with your example here on mine, which is great. And yep. I've uh, added a condition, I've added a code. When I select on the code there, right I here. get a list of all the codes. Yep. Um, where do they come from? <laughs> you coming I, on to that, mate? Can we do that no. later? Just because I'd like to get the scenario builder. Uh, okay, well, I'll answer the question and then we'll come back and explain why. Uh, sorry, Amir. Yeah. Um, the, the reason is that um, a coded element is bound to a value set which defines the possible set of codes. And that's all in the spec, so the tool was able to read that, pull it down and such like. Eventually we'll be able to do that with profiles, but I haven't done that just yet. Mine says able to prepare feed. I've obviously chosen the wrong uh, all right, there's all sorts of stuff in there. <laughs> we'll talk a bit more about, because um, coding is really important, so we'll talk a bit more about that later on, but that's where it came from. Sorry, John Williams, GP. Two questions, if I may. First of all, on the problem list, what is mode C, if I'm reading yes. it right? What's that? Um, so, oh, there. That means it's coded. Oh, right. Okay. And the next question. Share it in the spec, what it means. So just yeah, it before means? I do that, okay. next question, the problem condition. If you, when you highlighted that, I think it seemed to have a multiplicity of 0 to 1, but in fact you might have multiple problems. So how do, how do you cater for that? Because... You would have multiple problems. You, you, you would indeed. The, the, and the list can have many problems associated with it, but uh, the multiplicity is for this one particular connection is 0 to 1, but you have multiple connections. Because having been involved in modelling of this sort, that's often a problem. That's, that's often a, a thing that people find very difficult to understand. Yeah. What level does the multiplicity apply to? Indeed, it can be confusing. That's where that so one is. We haven't gone into all that level of detail so, as, so, a, as a parameter of the tooling yeah. and of the fire spec. But just, just sorry, just to answer, to answer your question, um, the question about the C. Yeah. So the C was just a, um, a an indicator I put in there, so that you know that this particular element is a coded element. See, so it's a codable concept. <laughs> And this one here, mode, is a, is a data type of code. So those are coded elements. They are ones that will be bound to a value set and to a terminology. So that's all that C means. And you can see there's the list, in fact, of options down through there. So, so David, just to recap the multiplicity yep. issue, yep. So if you go to problem list. Uh, there. Right. Yep. So here, is that what is going to allow us to have uh, a list of different problems or conditions. Okay. And if so... Yeah, I, I, actually, I have misled you ever so slightly. Right. And so I let's do just do... So, so I want to go over that. So again. actually, what this is, I was looking in the wrong place. This means that my discharge summary has got one problem list. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Yep. And... Yeah, zero correct, to one. Correct, yep. or none, absolutely. Um, so that's what that multiplicity, that multiplicity means. If I wanted to, I could say, um, as as you doubtless know, I could go into there, I go to edit element, I could give it a multiplicity of one to one, and now it's become nice and red, which is nice. And, and so what I've now said is, okay, you've got that problem list. Yeah, yeah. Where would you uh, put the parameter for m multiple? Well, you don't, you don't have to, no. because the list inherently is a list of multiple things. Yeah. That's why we've chosen it. Right. Okay. So under the problem condition, if you link that, you can, that's it, as a resource, that says you either have a condition or you, or you don't. Yeah. Could you have that set as zero to star? No, because what that's what that's what I was talking about before. That's yeah. where I, I think this is the this is the connection between the problem, this particular yeah. problem, and its list. Yeah. And each individual problem is only there's only there's only one connection. Yeah. That now a single condition instance could link to multiple lists quite so, happily. And we so can talk this, about that. In this model, where do you know you can have five problems? This How is do a, you know looking at this okay, you can so have the, five problems. So this is the type. Remember the type, not the instance. Yeah. We're not saying that. There isn't, uh, I mean, I guess you, you can in the, if you really wanted to in the list, you could do a profile on list, which indicated yeah. that there could only be five entries, if you really wanted to. The, this tool doesn't show that because it's dumb. Okay. Um, but you could. Um, Sorry, just, just to clarify that, if you use a type list, you can have any number. Correct. And furthermore, by default, the list can link to absolutely anything at all. You can. 
Yeah, you could profile away if you wanted to, but yeah. Andy. David, I was trying to follow you and I, and I couldn't find religion, but I found the preferred, uh, the, the stated religion of the, of the patient, which seemed to come through to um, hl7.org rather than .org.uk. It's probably yes. not a question for you, but for us in, in, in terms of consistency about how we pick some of the, these, these basic codes, having know that, having, having just got eight organisations and we found about four different ways we, we yeah. classify religion. So is that something we're thinking about trying to do nationally in terms of standardising? The answer, was religion, you, the answer is you absolutely should. And I, I kind of made a comment at one point about the fact that the role of the fire guy in this thing is to look and see if there's something already there. So yes, you, you should if you possibly can, but sometimes you cannot. I, th I think I'm getting my head, head round problem list, but in different contexts, the problems will have different priority. Yeah. Do you assign priority by adding an element? Of, how, how do you do that? So at the moment, I don't believe, and let, let's see how to, how to answer that question. So you're, you're talking about a list resource, right? And then you're talking about priority on the list, okay? So to find the answer, I go into the specification, and I'm talking about lists, so I will go to the list resource, like so. Can I clarify, are you saying priority of the list or priority of the condition? Priority of the condition. Within the list, so, so, that's what so, I'm talking about. So the patient might have multiple problems. Yeah. If they came in under dermat, it might be for their hernia. Yeah. If they came in under me, it might be for their colitis. Yeah. yeah. And there's actually, it's interesting, and again, I'm, I'm, you've got a couple of ways you could manage that. One way on fire you could manage that is to have separate lists. Your list, for the stuff you're interested in. Dermot's list for the stuff he's interested in. They could be completely separate lists. Or you could possibly say that here's the, here's the complete list. This one's important, that one's important, that one's not. But whether it's important is actually a reflection of the person looking at the list, not the patient. So the correct answer is probably you want an individual list. You want your list and you want, and you want Derma's list. Just, you know, there's no one answer for this. You'd have to work through it, but, but the thing is to know what the bits are that you've got to play with before you sort of decide. And you can ask the question in the community. Question over in the... Uh, no, no, beyond you, I'm afraid. <laughs> we'll come back. Yeah. So hard to get good help these days, isn't it? So as, as an extension to that query, how would you then ensure that you're curating the same set of underlying conditions? Because I understand the clinical prism by which you would look through separate lists, yeah. and that might be either personal clinician, this is my list and this is how I want to order it, or alternatively, I'm a diabetologist and these are my active problems that I want to solve. Yeah. But every time you look at a condition, you've got the things that you're concerned with the patient about, yeah. you've got the things that you need to know about but you're not need treating the patient for, and then the whole raft of other things that you don't care about. Yeah. Are they, does that then mean that within FHIR you've got three separate lists per you could, person? You absolutely could do. FHIR doesn't dictate it. FHIR, is, again, this, this comes back and I know that almost sounds like a cop-out. It's not intended to be. FHIR is a platform spec because it recognises that different people are going to do different things at different ways for different times. So it doesn't say that. Okay, so that, that makes sense. Yeah. And so, so how so, would you how would you so, manage? So, okay. I'll, I'll just finish off by one second. Yeah, sure. A profile could. You could go up and you could you could create a profile that, that, that sort of that, that, that described that or more of an implementation guide. Hi, I just wanted to know from a commissioner's point of view. I mean, when a patient gets admitted, if they've got a background problem of diabetes, for example, and they went for a simple hernia surgery, it is still fed back to the commissioner that it was a diabetes-related admission. So has FHIR got a way where it's still got on the problem list, but it can kind of like differentiate between what the active problem with which the patient got admitted. So for our data purposes, because we get feedback from the right care, NHS right care, saying like, look, the diabetes admissions are going up. But in fact, the reality is this patient just happened to have diabetes but went in. Can FHIR differentiate between the two so, problems and yeah I think there um, you would be talking about the encounter resource because it's in an encounter context that you're, you're talking about so if we go and take a look at the encounter um, in, and you, you can see it's a two maturity so it needs work on it um, and we go and see in the encounter 
there is uh, here the diagnosis and the role that the diagnosis has within the encounter which I think is what would meet what you are talking about. It would be a, a business, it would be a, a, this is how it would represent it in fire, the, the, the business would have to actually do that, but that's where that would sit. Yeah. Any more questions? In that scenario, would that diagnosis be in, if you, sorry, if you created a, um, a query, whatever you call them, um, from this structure, um, would there just be one diagnosis? Because picking up on the point from my colleague over there, um, you've got that role thing. What, what role does this diagnosis have within that admission? I know that um, if you put down that a patient has COPD when they're admitted, they, they get charged at a different rate. Yep. The hospital admission is charged differently. And so, but if you've only got one possible diagnosis that comprises you know, the entry of a condition so, the, so that you don't. It's, it's multiplicity is not to start. You can have as many as you want. Sorry? I've highlighted the multiplicity on there. Right. So you can have many diagnoses, and each diagnosis has got a role that's there. Okay. So, can so when, when, you, when you submit a fire query to pull the data, you put diagnosis in once, but you might get several back. Un unless you query on the role as well. Yeah. So we, when we did this curation exercise, we didn't use all the different elements in the <laughs> FIRE resource because, as I said earlier, we're on a journey of what we need to use. There are going to be things, am I right, David, in, yeah. in, the, in the international spec that we haven't thought about needing to use. Yeah, and there will be plenty of things in the, that yeah. aren't in this next spec. Exactly. Yeah. That yeah. We, so we don't necessarily have to use everything in there as well. Okay, and that's our implementation, guys. Should we should we go on to the? Yep. So we we're going to have a break at three. All right. That's, so that's that should be tons of time. Fifteen minutes. Or so. All right. So, so that's the um, logical model, uh, uh, logical model stash um, our resources model. The uh, let's close down some of these things. How's that down? Um, if we go and look at the scenario builder now. So the scenario builder as I say, was developed to allow people to figure out how resources connect together. So in it, you create, and I think there's one I created earlier on. In fact, why don't we look at that one? So this is an example, actually, of the, um, and the actual way it gets laid out is often a little bit, um, uh, a little bit interesting. Uh, so here, is a scenario. Now, I'm going to ask a question you're not allowed to answer. How many lists has this patient got? How many conditions appear on more than one list? How many conditions appear on more than one list? Easy, really, isn't it? So that's, I mean, we talked about this earlier on. So this was an example of how to model that issue of lists and this is really goes to the heart of why this was developed in the first place because instead of arguing around what should we do you can actually throw a picture up and say well this is what's going to look like what do you reckon what you can also do and again I was going to talk to that this afternoon but I'll talk to it now is that oh it is this afternoon I suppose isn't it really um, just a couple of a couple of things I'll just point about if you if you do start to generate um, multiple uh, scenarios, you'll find they get really complicated really quickly. So what often helps is to hide the patient. And when you do that, you can get some really interesting things, but it just takes the patient out of the picture, and that can sometimes declutter it all. What you can also do is choose a particular resource like that one, or the list, take that one, and show only the references to that one particular list. So you can dynamically move in and out of the, um, in, you know, shift the picture around. So I'll go back to show all there. Now, do we want to make this so people can know how to use the tooling? Because I think part of people's were. Yep. yep. So can we just do that again in the context of yep. a patient, a, de a discharge summary with a patient, a problem, an allergy? 
this. So okay. that, uh, and this is again helping us to build a map of how fire resources are used. The output of this is not deliberately to give us the technical people the specification there and then, it's to help us understand how fire is being used, remember. Okay. So I'll create a, oh, it's not a list, is it? It's my new scenario. Okay, I won't worry about anything else. Now, I, I personally choose the uh, the graph um, picture first because that gives me the, me the view. We then click on the add resource. Generally, you'll want to first add the patient because if you do that, then the tooling is able to automatically link resources to the patient if it's appropriate to do so. Usually pays to put a text element in there as well. Uh, because what that does is then puts the text on the graph. So we're creating, we're going to start with the patient's problem list. You can do it either way, you can do the list first and then the, the conditions or the conditions in the list, it doesn't really matter. Uh, I will actually add for no good reason, the list first, and I'm going to call it the problem list. Like so. Notice how the list automatically gets wired up to the patient because a list is generally about a patient. It actually doesn't have to be. If I go and click on that uh, item in here, I now see all of the um, elements that can be added from the spec. This works to some degree with profiles, although there's a few bugs when you're doing some more complex profiles, but it works just fine on the, on the standard spec. And this is STU 3? This is STU, well, it depends which server you've done. Right. We can do STU 2 and 3, yeah. but 3 is the one there. So what you can actually see is the subject is, is actually optional. Um, it's, uh, it's 0 to 1. By the way, if it's red in here, it shows it's required. Star means there can be more than one. An X there is what we call a choice, and an X can have more than one type of thing. So, for example, this is saying that the subject of a list could be a patient, a group, a device, or a location. But we'll stick with patient because that's the, um, that's the most common one. Then I add a condition, like so, which I will call asthma. And then see it's wound up, linked up to patient. D David, Oops. on the condition, did you have to, you gave it a specific condition. Could that just be a condition one and a condition two and later that you actually specify the condition? You, you could, but it's, it, uh, it, makes it un makes it difficult. Remember, what we're doing here, and again it's important, we are now, we're now doing instances. So if you just call it condition one, that's kind of meaningless. I think it's better to give it a name of some sort. Uh, we can also, uh, no, I'll go with that. Okay, then I'll add a new condition and I'll call this one diabetes. So just remembering this is instances, this is using the These model to, to create populate instances. real data as in yeah. you know real patient data. Yeah. So I now I'm, I'm also going to add no I'll go with this. Um, so you'll see how we have a list resource a, and two condition resource and they each have their link to the patient. But what I want to do is I want to establish a, a, a link, a reference from the problem list to the individual conditions. To create a link yourself, you first select the resource that you are going from. References are always one way, from something to something else. Um, this is an example where you might want to go into the fire spec. Um, yeah, okay, thanks. So I'll open it again. And you might want to go to your uh, reference and just to figure out, because this will tell you more, so we can see here that the entry, so there's the actual entry there, so it's entry.item. So each entry here has got a flag against it, and this incidentally talks to that um, option that we had when talking about lists. If we wanted to say that something was was, was critical, severe, whatever, we could use this flag option, potentially. Again, you learn this stuff the more you get in depth into yeah. the resources about what its elements are. You, you wouldn't know that straight away unless yeah. you have a greater grounding in it. But this, this is the one I want. This is the item that is, is, is the one that I want. So if I go back to my scenario, like so, to here, 
Notice how it's a um, it's a, a drop down list. I select item. See how re item is required. It's red. And then what will happen is when the tooling knows from the specification what are the types of resource it can link to. And it will display those types in the list down through here. It so happens that an entry can link to anything. So I therefore get a list of all of the items and I just select the one that I want to add, like so, and I now get the link established. And then to link the next one, so I've got a reference from list to asthma. I now want to create a reference from list to diabetes. I come into here, I go to item, but if I was just to correct, select diabetes here, it will replace the existing one. I want to tell it that I want to create a new linkage or a new branch, as I've called it. So click on the add branch option. We get a two appearing through there. Click on diabetes and there it is. You can move it around to create a better, um, um, what's all of? I'm not, I'm not responsible for drawing this fortunately, but you, can, you, you, get, you get the idea. It's quite fun. Some, sometimes, it's more, sometimes it's more fun than other times. <laughs> Um, does it sometimes Dan. reset if you uh, only if you hide the patient and put it back in? Would it does yeah. it come up with a different one? There yeah. we go. Brilliant. I've used it. Uh, brilliant. Um, so 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 that's how we that's how we um, create those lists. There is a bug. I'm sorry. There is a feature uh, in uh, in the tooling um, when you're creating a multiple list, and that is, and I'll I will own up to it by. Adding a new list, and because you, you wanted a allergy list as well, yeah. Didn't let's you? do. Um, oops, uh, create a, an allergy list, and then I'll create a allergy intolerance. So the allergy intolerance resource is what you would use to talk about your allergies, hence it's named allergy intolerance. And I'll say they're allergic to latex. And then I'll add another resource, and I'll say they're allergic to penicillin, like so. Okay, so I now want to link my allergy links. Again, notice the explicit links from the allergy intolerance of the patient. So I now go to my allergy list. I go to item, and what am I doing? It's a notice how I can I can link to anything, so it can get a bit confusing. I'm the first to admit. But so I'm going to link them to latex, like so. I want to add a new branch. If I just click on Add Branch, I'll get an error. Well, it's not an error, it just tells you it can't do it. And what I have to do is just click away from that list and then come back to it. And I can now add a branch and it is going to be to penicillin, which is that one there. You can see why, by the way, you need to put a name in so you can tell them yep. apart. Okay, so I now have, I'm going to try your trick. Hide the patient, show all, didn't work. Kind of worked. <laughs> sort of. Okay, so we, we now have a, um, uh, we now have a patient, there we go, much nicer, a patient that has two lists, an allergy list, and a, uh, a allergist and a problem list. So, so this is showing you the, the relationships. Now you're learning more about fire between the resources, how they're linked together. Yep. I'll just come to a question in a minute. So on the right hand side now, you've moved from your logical model, which is a slightly different thing. On the right hand side of the screen, you can see on this view the elements of the fire um, specification. That, here, so you can start to get, you know, if you've got a greater understanding, you'll be able to click on some of this. So, can you do any interactive? Sure. What, what might you be able to do? I so, like it's a deliberate. Like, so, so what? Cop, bad cop thing. Yeah. So, um, I'm the good cop. Yeah. So, one thing again, I was, I was going to go into a bit more detail, but I'll do it now. I'll come back if we want to. So, what we've been doing is we've been just talking about references. What we haven't been talking about is content. So what we want to do is to actually add content to the structured data, coded data. And to do that, what we do is we select the element that we're interested in, we click on what we want to add, so like code, and you'll see how we get, that's the, um, the data type there, which is a codable concept, 
uh, this is its value set binding. Uh, and so we'll, come, we'll come back to that after the break. Um, so actually, maybe I should talk about something a bit simpler. So yeah. clinical status. Clinical status is a code. I click on that. It comes up with the options. Again, it knows this because it could read the spec and find out. Click on save. If I want to actually have a look at my, my instance, there's a couple of ways. There's this current resource views, but we just recently added this toggle input <laughs> mode. And what this does is this shows in three panes the graph over there, the sort of editing area here, and the resource that we're building here. For the techies. So if I wanted to say that the onset is a date time, which occurred then, and save. So we can now see I've added onset date time to the um, to the instance, to so this particular resource instance. So we'll, we'll stop in a minute before question. So Dave, Dave when you created this, yep. obviously it's helping us to link the resources together, have an understanding of how fire works from a clinical point of view. Yeah. What? Where where might a developer come in, and what might can they see all of the XML of this instance anywhere? Well, I mean, or the JSON, and, and, all the JSON, and, yeah. And, and how how might the developer and you, or the clinician, if you so choose, work together on this bit? I think the first thing is that the developers need to understand this much as anybody else does. This this helps developers to understand what the bits are. In terms of creating the underneath stuff. For each element that I select, I can see its content over there. And as an instance, it shows the relationships in that content to the other aspects. Sure. So you can see, for example, there's list. I can see that it's got a, a, a reference to the patient, which is subject. And there's two entries, one to that condition and one to that condition. So this is under the hood. This is yeah. what, it's, what it's like in computable language. But we're looking at it from a different perspective yeah. in graphs, as models, that we understand. But you can, if you want to, there will be some of us who want to get to this level, use this tool to understand much more uh, uh, and maybe get involved in some of the technical documentation. That There are people who want to do that. Uh, there's medication for that nowadays, yeah. so we don't have to be... So, so let's just take final questions before break. Is that OK? Yeah, of course. So hopefully that's helped explain logical model and scenario better and what it could be used for. Uh, how do you remove a reference? It's a slightly clumsy way of doing it. Um, but what you do is you go to the um, current resource view. You need to go to the tree, like say there. Click on delete. And it's gone. But you, yeah, unfortunately, right at the moment, you have to do it at the, at, the, at the upper level. So I've lost both references. I need to go back and establish them again. But that's how you get rid of them.